In this video we're going to record a bouncing ball. We're not only going to make the ball bounce up and down but we're also going to use stretch and squash um, as two principles of animation which we're going to use to make the ball look more squishy. So we're going to start off here with our basic ball we're going to create and um, you'll see that our ball's sitting here on the um, on, the, on, on its axis at 0, 0, 0. Now having the channel box edit is going to be really useful to us at this point, so make sure your channel box is visible. Um, and uh, this is my default setup at the moment in my, so we can see the animation controls down the bottom here. Let's set up some of these animation properties. First of all, the frame rate. We want our frame rate to be 25 frames per second. It doesn't really matter which ones you choose, but for the purposes of this, I want 25 frames per second. Now you notice that as soon as you do that, you're going to end up with your first frame here being frame 1.04. Just change that number there to, uh, if you press this back button here, you'll see that the first frame is frame 1.04. That's um, because we've changed it to 25 frames a second. We can fix that by just um, coming down here. When we type 1 in here, we're saying that the first frame of our animation should be frame 1. And this one here will make um, 50. So this is only going to be a 50 frame long animation. And this bit here is the amount we can see on the timeline. So you can see on my timeline here, I can see frame 1 to 50 on that timeline. And if I zoom this down like this, I get it's like only 1 to 25. So for the first part of this animation, I'm just going to be dealing with the first one second. So I'm going to make this 1. That makes the first frame that I see here, frame 1. And I'm going to make this frame over here the last frame that I see, frame 25. So my animation still goes from frame 1 to frame 50, but this little window in here that I can see here is frames 1 to 25. Alright, so nothing's going to happen at the moment, so we're going to just press the, um, we're just going to, uh, now we can go back to frame 1, and now we can press the W key and we can start to look at our object and move it around. So obviously when we move this object around, its translate Y value over here is going to change. Um, I'm going to make this one, and that should put it like straight on the bottom there. That's good to good to know that that's there. Now, the thing is that what we're going to do is we're going to be making this ball bounce up and down, right, like this. But when that ball bounces up and down, you're going to find that um, what we're going to do later on is we're going to be scaling this, right, so that when the ball's up nice and high, it's going to be squished, stretched out like this, and then when it lands on the ground, it's going to be squashed flat like this. Now the problem is that if we try to animate our ball like that, you can imagine that if I animate my ball bouncing up and down and bouncing straight off the bottom here so that it gets down to this value of 1 when it's at the bottom of the bounce, and then I decide that I want to squash it there, you can see that the problem is going to be that the ball doesn't actually touch the ground. There's a difference in space there. Similarly, if the ball is stretched like this, it's going to go through the ground. So, one of the ways we can fix that problem is by changing the anchor point. So I'm going to hold down the D key and the J key at the same time, and I'm just going to move this anchor point down using my, um, using this, this um, uh, Y arrow here. So D and J at the same time, and the reason I'm using D and J at the same time is that will cause it to snap. If I don't hold down the J key at the same time as the D key, it won't snap as I do that. Okay, so you can see now that my anchor point is snapped to the bottom of my object. It means that its translate Y position here is still 1, but now it means that I can, if I, if I was to scale this, it means that the scale is going to happen from the bottom, and that will make it easier for me when I animate later on. Okay, so let's... Um, so let's get my um, let's get my um, let's get my animation happening. Now I'm assuming you've watched the other two basic introduction to video, uh, basic introduction to animation videos. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to um, go ahead and um, go ahead and just do a simple animation. If you're not quite sure how to do this, you need to go back through the basics video to watch it. Right. So let's let's begin. I'm going to start with my um, object at its, the top of its bounce here, so I'm going to make that 8. And I'm going to keyframe that position. So I'm just going to come over here to translate Y, and I'm going to go key selected. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the bottom of its uh, trajectory be at frame 25. So I'm going to select frame 25 here, and then I'm going to move it back to 1, and then I'm going to key that. Alright, so now if I was to play this animation, I can see that it's going to go up and down between frame 1 and frame 25. Okay, so that's great so far. Let's um, maybe we can play that and have a look at it. And you can see that because my um, selection is only between frame 1 and 25, it's only playing frame 1 to 25. Um, if we put this on here to repeat, okay, so I've clicked this twice, there's a little repeat button there. Um, now what it's going to do is it's going to play backwards and forwards like this between those two. And it's kind of bouncing, but you can see that, that the motion is a bit wrong, like it's a bit sort of slow motion in there. Right, so it's like kind of slowing, it's, slow, it's slowing down before it hits the ground, which doesn't seem right. So, what we can do here is we can fix that up. And we need to do that, we need to change the interpolation or the way that the, t the animation actually runs. So let's get into a different view here, which gives us more control over our animation. We're going to come over here to our workspace. We're going to choose animation. When we do that, we just get a new workspace layout which will show us this um, graph view down here. This is what we call the graph editor. And in that graph editor, we can see a visual representation of the movement of this object. So this is its translate Y channel. Okay, so this is this thing up here. And we can see that as we move, we've got a graph that tells us what the Y value is. And the main thing to notice about this graph is the curves on it, right? It's not a straight line between the two keyframes. That's a keyframe there. That's another keyframe there. So it's not a straight line between our two keyframes, it's a curve between the two keyframes. And that means that it starts slow, it speeds up, and then it ends slow. And that's not how objects actually move in the real world. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to grab this little tangent, what they call a tangent handle here, and we're going to make a shape that looks like this. What this tells us is that this object's going to start up here and it's going to start moving slowly and then it's going to get faster and faster and faster and faster until it gets to frame 25 when it stops. So let's give that a go and see what that looks like if I play that. Okay, so that's looking a bit better now, right? It's like hitting the ground and then bouncing and coming back up again. Now remember, we're just playing this backwards and forwards. This isn't my full animation. This is only half of my animation, but it's probably a good place to start from. Okay, so if that's all we needed to do, we'd be done. But we need to have the stretch and squash in there as well. So let's start off by um, stretching our ball a bit. We're going to give it a scale value here. Now I could use my scale tool to do this. Okay, so I could come back in here and use my scale tool to do it, but it's a little bit more precise if I use these. And since I'm going to be keyframing over here anyway, I might as well use them. So I'm going to come in here and put in 1.5 there for the scale X and um, 1.5 for scale Y. And then 0 0.5 for my scale, um, for sorry, for scale Y there. Now, the reason I've done that is because that's what I want my ball to look like when it's squished. So I've increased both of these ones and I've decreased that one to try and keep the volume roughly the same. And then when my ball's stretched, I want to have the opposite happen. I want to have this one at 0 0.5 and this one at 0 0.5 and this one here I want to have at 1.5. Okay, so that's my ball when it's stretched. And that's where I want it to be on this first frame because it's going to start off stretched all the way up here. Okay, so let's um let's keyframe that. Now I could select all of these and go key selected, or I could go over here and I could go key and set on scale. Or you can see I can press Shift R. So remember our R key is the key we use to bring up the scale tool. If we press Shift R, it'll set these as keyframes. And you can see that the scale X, Y, and Z keyframes then appear over here. So now what happens when I animate this is that it's going to keep going as it did before, but now it's just going to be a different shaped ball. Okay, to make this a bit more realistic, what we want to do is make it so that at the bottom of my curve here, that ball goes flat. But here's the thing, if the ball goes flat right on frame 25 
and then goes back to stretched um, on 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 future frames, then it's only going to really exist for flat for one frame. That's not going to be a big problem for us now because we're actually going to add some more frames afterwards. But if you are going to be doing just a, a fairly simple animation, you might want to have it go flat on, say, frame 23 so that you have a couple of frames where it's flat. We're just going to leave it like this. And then on frame 25, we're going to switch to our other scale values that we looked at before. So I'm going to stop that. I'm going to go forward to frame 25. And then on frame 25, I'm going to change my scale values here to the new values that I want. So the values that I want in here are 1.5, 0 0.5, and 1.5. And luckily, we moved that anchor point at the beginning so that ball stays on the ground there. OK, so now what this is going to look like, we'll just, um, we'll just come in here and we'll key those. So you can see I've got my two curves in here now for my scales. It looks like there's only two curves. There's actually three curves here because our X scale and our Z scale, they're going to be the same, right? So when we look at all three of them together, you can only see two because one of them's covering up the other one. So let's just have a look at um, how these all work together. Let's run that animation. Okay, so our ball's kind of bouncing up and down like this, but it's not very realistic. Like when it bounces up, it looks okay, but when it bounces down, it's looking wrong. And the reason for that is that our ball is anticipating that it's going to be squashed. But in real life, the ball doesn't like know it's going to be squashed. It just suddenly becomes squashed. So what we actually have to do here is we actually have, what we're saying is that we want the ball to stay in that shape all the way through to here until it reaches frame 25. And then only on frame 25 should it change. So to do that, we have to go back to frame 24 and add a keyframe in here and make sure its scale values are set to these same values as they are back on frame 1. So back on frame 1, it was 0 0.5, 1.5, and 0.5. So let's go to frame 4 and let's do that here. So we'll go 0 0.5, 1.5. And 0 0.5. And then we're going to um, select all of those and key selected. So you can see down here that our scale values stay the same all the way through and then they suddenly change at the end. Like that. Okay, over the course of one frame it flattens out. So let's watch that as an animation. Alright, now that's a bit fast if we were only going to be doing that part of it. But we actually have a second half of this animation we need to do. And that's the part where it bounces back up. Because at the moment I'm just looping this backwards and forwards, right? If I put this forward as just like a standard loop, then you can see that it's doing this, right? So we've only got half of the animation. So we need to add the other half of the animation in here. So how do we do that? I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see a little bit more of what's going on down here. And we'll increase our window here from, but instead of just being frame 1 to 25, we're going to make it frame 1 to 50 there like that. Okay, because now I can scroll out of this. When using my scroll wheel, I can scroll out here and um, option and middle mouse button, I can pan that across. And I can kind of see what's going on here a little bit better. If you want, you can also click these buttons in here and this will scale to um, the different, um, to, to, to fit in different parts of your animation. So if you click this one, it will scale the current curves into the window. And if you click on this one, it will scale the entire timeline in there. And I want to see the whole timeline. So what I want to do is I want to add more keyframes in here somewhere. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have them, let's deal with translation first, right? So we're going to go up to frame 50. And at frame 50, it's why translation needs to back up at 8 again. So we're going to put it back up to 8. And we're going to keyframe that. Okay, so now we can see that we've got this kind of thing going on. Let's play that through and see what happens. Okay, something weird's gone on there, right? The weird thing that's gone on there is that when our object hits the ground here, you can see the curve goes right down under zero. So that's what's causing it to go underneath the mesh, or underneath the ground. Um, we need to fix that up. I'm going to click on Y here so I just see that Y axis. And um, then I'm going to just have a bit of a zoom in here. Now, you can see what's going on 
but how do we change it? In order to change this, we need to click on these um, keyframes and we need to change these tangent lines. You'll notice that as I change these tangent lines, I can change the shape of that. Now what I want is I want this to come down and go to one at this point here, but then on this other side here, I just want it to bounce straight back up again. So what I need to do is I need to like make it so that when I adjust these cur these handles here, I can adjust one without adjusting the other one. To do that, I, I select my um, keyframe, I right click on it, and I come down here to tangents, and I, and I select um, break tangents, right? When you select break tangents, I can now adjust these two separately. So I can just adjust them up into the shape that I want. Okay, so something like that should work. Let's have a let's give let's play that and see what happens. Okay, so the we're only looking at the vertical movement here. We're ignoring the crazy um, distortion on the object, but we can see that that's kind of working, right? So we want this kind of like V shape to be in there. Okay, so that's working okay for us. Next thing we have to deal with is the scale. What's going on there? Well, you can see the scales like we've got our scale snapping back to um, going from 0.5 to 1.5 there for the X scale. Um, the Y scale is doing the opposite, and then we've got the Z scale doing that. So what we actually want is for this to scale um, back up to to this 0.5 value, but we probably don't want it to just suddenly snap back up. So we don't want it to snap back straight again. We could give that a go. Let's um. Let's put in a keyframe and uh, see what happens. So maybe what we'll do is we'll come all the way over here to frame 50 and we'll say well at frame 50 we actually want this object to be back at its default starting position of 0 0.5 there and 1.5 and 0 0.5 again. Okay and we'll put in a keyframe for all of these three here. So we get this kind of shape going on here. Uh, let's have a look and see how that looks when we actually run it. Okay, that's not too bad, right? We can probably make it so that it's like it's probably not really the movement of that object's not quite right in terms of how fast it reforms its shape. So we probably want to edit these curves here a bit. And we're going to want to do it for all three of our scale values. But we'll just do them one at a time because it's a bit easier to see. So let's have a look um, first of all at this one. Let's make it um, let's make it change its shape so that instead of being like that, let's make it do this. So what this is going to do is it means it's going to go from flat back to um, back to skinny fairly slowly at first and then quickly towards the end. But only on that only on that x axis. Let's do the same thing to it on the um, y axis. So we're going to make it go like this, and then the z axis. We're going to make it go like like this. Hmm. Maybe the other way around will work better. Now you'll notice that sometimes you might select everything and then when I move one they all move around. We don't want that to have that happen. So what we're going to do is make sure that we just carefully only select one. I'm just going to move that one out to there like that. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're just inverting these um, graphs at the moment. So this one's going to go flat, but we don't want to do that. So we deselect, select that one, go flat there like that. And this one we're going to bring down here like this. And then finally this shape here we're going to... Um, have we done all of them? Oh, it looks like we've done all of them. Very nice. So how does it work? Hmm, still not super happy with it. But we could play around with this curve a bit more until we got it to a point where we were happy with it.
The other thing we could do is make it linear. Sometimes you might want actually this to not be a curve at all, but a straight line. You can see there's a slight curve in there, which we probably don't want either. Not that we really care about that curve because it's such a, such a small change. But if I come in here, I can come into tangents and you can see that I can choose um, in tangents and out tangents. That out tangents, just off the bottom of my screen there, unfortunately. Um, those that um, in tangents are the tangents on this side, on the left side of the keyframe, and out tangents are the tangents on the right side. So what I can do is I can come in here and I can select, um, I can select tangents and I can select my out tangent and I can tell my out tangent to be linear. When you tell your out tangent to be linear like this, um, I'll just show you that if I can bring this up a bit, I'll probably show you. So out tangent. Up. <laughs> I'm not having any luck here at all off the side of my screen trying to get everything fit on the screen without the video being too big let's see what I can do here with that um, okay tangents out tangent there we go you can see we've got linear in there right so when you select linear there it means that this out tangent will be linear between these two points Let's do the same thing with our other um, with our other uh, parts of our scale here. So we're going to go uh, this one. We'll make this linear. So we go here, tangents, out tangent, linear. This one, tangents, out tangent, linear. Okay, in that case I had to set both my out and my in tangents to linear. So the out tangent for this one and the in tangent for this one. And for scale Z, that's right, scale Y is right, and this scale X. I want to select this one, tangents, out tangent, linear. This one down here, tangents, in tangent, linear. Okay, so let's see how that looks now. That looks a little bit better. Um, I could still probably speed it up a bit, um, maybe have it have it um, reform to that to, to its to its uh, stretch in space a bit faster. So I could maybe have it sort of uh, I can move these keyframe this keyframe back to the left a bit, and I could do that for all of them. So let me um, bring up all of my frames here. I could grab both of these keyframes and move them all. Whoops. Move all of these keyframes back, try not to move them up or down at all. So if I move them back to frame 40 there, you can see now it's going to go back to its, its um, resting position a little bit earlier. Okay, so now I've got my animation done. Um, you can tweak around with it and play with it for a bit longer if you want. Um, until it looks more realistic, but when you get your animation down to the way you want it to be, the next thing to do is you might want to create a, um, a, a, a play blast. A play blast is basically just um, a animation, so basically the, rec the window that you can see gets recorded as a video. Uh, that's really useful for you to like do a preview of your final render uh, before you go ahead and render it. Um, and you can also send your play blast to other people if they need to sort of preview your animation before you go ahead and spend the time actually animating it. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go up to our Windows menu and you can see there's a play blast option here. If you want to you can go into the play blast options by clicking the little square on the right and you can see the various options you can come in. You can come in and use. Um, so you can use different um, settings for your display size. From window will work, it will give you a video that's the size of your um, actual um, 3D window here. So we might, might make that a little bit narrower there. Maybe zoom it in a little bit. Maybe pan it down a bit. Alright. So. Um, and then what we can do is we can click the play blast button. 
You can also choose your encoding here. If you get a, um, if you do it and you get a video that's green instead of the actual video, um, you might change it, change it from um, JPEG to H.264. So on a Mac, that that can matter. All right, so uh, click Play Blast, and something will happen, and you should see a window pop up with your animation in it. And this is uh, now a video of your animation, so we can play that. And it's just going to play its 50 frames, it's only 50 frames long, but if you want it to loop, um, depending on the software you're playing it back in, you can turn on looping in the software and it'll just keep going through and playing. And you can see there I've got now a little video of uh, this playing. So Play Blast is pretty cool. Um, once you've done that, you can obviously save this video as something else um, and uh, um, put it wherever you want.